What's up Panda Parade, it's Karaku Zero here bringing you a VR chat tutorial on how to take your VRM and upload it to YouTube. Now why am I making this? Because I know a lot of you that follow me are VTubers and would like to upload your VRM model to VR chat, whether it be for just having it to play around or for role playing, uh, whatever have you. I know a lot of you want to do it, so this tutorial is here to help you. Uh, some of the things we're going to cover uh, is fixing your model, uh, making it uh, a little bit more optimized uh, than what it would be if you just upload it normally. Uh, if you have ears and a tail like I do, it will help you to fix that in VR chat. And we're going to go over some uh, a little more uh, customization tips for you um, to help you have a nice looking avatar in VR chat. Now one of the reasons I'm making this tutorial is because I have started a VR chat roleplay. Uh, and the reason why we're using VR chat is because, like I said, a lot of people are VTubers and they want to use their own custom model like I do and use it to roleplay on VR chat. And the reason why we're using VR chat is because we can do this and make our own custom worlds. And I have made my own custom world for uh, my friends and uh, everyone that would like to join to roleplay uh, and if you'd like to get on on that join the discord the link is in the description below uh, also in the description I'm going to be placing the links that you'll be seeing me download in other various places so our first step uh, in all of this is uh, well the tutorial assumes you already have a Vroid model already made and your trust level is high enough on VR chat to be able to upload custom avatars. So we're going to assume that you already have a Vroid model and that you already have a trusted user level on VR chat, uh, which of course already assumes that you have a VR chat account. Uh, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to open up Blender because uh, in VR chat, there is a problem uh, uploading VRMs and your knees kind of buckle and they twist inwards and it just doesn't look right. Um, so this step is going to remedy that. Um, now first to answer why the legs bend inwards is because the bones are rotated towards each other. Uh, this is called bone roll. Uh, most software can compensate and automatically adjust this using animation. But for VR chat, you will have to set this manually in Blender. Um, so to do that, go ahead and download the latest version of Blender. Uh, my version is 2.92.0. Uh, that's the version I have and the version we'll be using today. And I know this works for me, so it will probably work for you too. Um, so to do this, you'll have to open your model in Blender. But Blender does not natively uh, import VRM. So what you're going to do is you're going to need to get this VRM add-on for Blender. The link will be in the description and you'll download this add-on for Blender 2.82 plus. Uh, so this does work for Blender 2.92. Uh, and it gives you kind of some instructions here. Um, you'll Select Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, push Install. Now you're going to select the zip file itself. Do not export that zip file uh, into a folder. You're going to want to select the zip file. Uh, confirm Community is Abled. Find uh, the VRM Import Export VRM Format. Click that checkbox and you'll be good to go. Now, so we're going to go ahead and import our model. So you'll get this option to import a VRM. Uh, find wherever your VRM is saved. Mine is saved in Karaku avatar files. Uh, and I'm going to open the current VRM and import. Now once that's imported, uh, you'll see uh, if you do the general setup, you'll see the camera and the lights and the block still here. So what you're going to do to remedy that is just go over here, select the camera, hold down control, click the cube and the light, and we're just going to hit the delete button and that's going to delete that. So now we have our file here. 
and I'm using the middle mouse button to look around. I know that was the most confusing part. And if you want to move up and down, hold shift and then hit the middle mouse button and that will get you in the position you want. So what we're going to do over here is where it says um, the scene collection over here. You're going to want to go down to armature and select the armature. Uh, and from there, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go into edit mode. So to do this, we press tab and that places us in edit mode. Uh, now to uh, select all the bones, press A. Uh, which it already does for us. And uh, after that, you're going to press Alt and R, and that's going to roll the bones and make them in the right position. Now, once you do that, that's all you need to do in Blender. You're gonna go to File and Export, and we're going to export this VRM file. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and go to my Karaku avatar files. Make a new folder and call this tutorial because I've already done this for my avatar. And we're going to call this Karaku Tutorial.vrm. And we're going to hit export VRM. And there you have it. You're done with Blender. Now, what you're going to want to do is import it into Unity. And uh, if you don't have Unity, the correct version that you're going to need for VR Chat is going to be 2018.4.20. And uh, I'll provide a link in the description for the Unity downloader. Uh, and this is the one you're going to need, Unity 2018.4.20. You can download it with the Unity Hub and uh, open it up from there. Uh, so we got Unity downloaded. You're going to click New uh, and you're going to have a new Unity project. You can call it whatever you like. I'm going to call this Karaku Tutorial. And we're going to hit Create Project. And Unity's going to load up. We're just going to give it a minute to load up here and I'll be right back with you. Alright, Unity has finally loaded up. Now, some other things that we're going to need for this. Uh, you are going to need uh, the VRChat SDK 2.0, um, which you will get from the VRChat website. So you will go in here, log in, uh, go to downloads here, and you'll find this download page. So VRChat SDK 2, you'll hit download SDK 2, and it will download the file for you. Now, one other thing that you're going to need uh, that I will also provide the link for is the VRM converter for VRChat. It's a free download on Booth. So you'll just go into Booth and you'll click the free download and download that as well. All right, so the next thing is uh, importing our assets into Unity. Um, so the order is important in which you do this. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go to Assets and right click on that. Uh, we're going to Import Package, Custom Package, and from here you will find the downloads that you downloaded. So the SDK2 is right here, so we're going to open that. And this is going to come up after it loads in and you'll just click on Import and it will import that package. And we just hold on a few more moments. All right, so that takes a few moments to import and uh, it took mine uh, about a minute. Uh, and you'll see you have these new folders here and up at the top you'll have VRChat SDK uh, at the top right there. Now the next thing you're gonna wanna do is import your VRM. So we'll go back and we'll do import custom package again and we need the VRM converter for VRChat. Now that's going to do the same thing. It's going to load up. You'll click, it'll come up at this box. You'll click import. All right, and now we have our VRM converter in here. You can see it made all these other folders and we also have a tab up here called VRM now. To get your model in here, you're going to Click on the VRM tab, click Import, 
now you're going to go where you have saved your um, avatar file from Blender and you'll click on that hit open and it's going to ask you to save the prefab so you'll click save and just give it a minute to load in all right now that you see that that has loaded in we have our avatar file right here so you can click on it and inspect it karaku tutorial that's the one that i saved it's a prefab asset uh, and this next step is optional if you have uh, a tail uh, and this is the fix for the tail. If your avatar does not have a tail, you can go ahead and skip to the next part of this tutorial. Uh, so right now I'm going to go over the tail fix. You're going to take this prefab here and put it, drag it over here to the scene. Uh, and now you can see that you have your prefab in the scene right here. And Unity is a bit different from Blender, where if you uh, do a right click, you'll pan around, you can pan up and down, and if you middle mouse button, uh, you can drag around. Um, so it's a lot different from Blender, you don't have to use shift and middle mouse for everything. You can do middle mouse to move left and right, up and down, and right click to pan as you do. All right, so now that we have this in here, we're going to click on this arrow here to open the prefab and it'll change to look like that. Uh, and the reason why we need to do this is if you look over here, you see my tail there. Now we're gonna go ahead and hit the play button. You don't need to do this, but I'm just gonna show you why you need to do this. If we go to our scene here, we click the rotate button and we select our head. When you rotate the head, the tail is disconnected. So what we're going to do is we're going to connect the tail to the hips instead of the head. So get out of play mode here. All right, and to do that, we're going to need the Unity Bone Weight Transfer. Uh, I'll provide a link in this description, but it is free. You can get it off of Booth as well. You'll just click the button here to download it, and you will import the asset just like we did with the other files. So we're just going to go to uh, Assets, right-click on it, Import Package, Custom Package, and we're going to find where we downloaded that. And that is going to be uh, the bone weight transfer and open that. This box will come up. You'll click on import. All right, so we got the Unity bone weight transfer in here. All right, so like I said, um, your tail is connected to the head. So what we're going to do is you'll have the root menu like this. You'll just drop that down. Um, you'll drop down the hips, the spine, the chest, the upper chest, and then you'll drop down the neck, which has the head. And from the head, you see all of these hair joints uh, and the eyes that the uh, that is connected to the head. Uh, this last hair joint down here is my tail um, because it is the last thing that I added. Um, so that is where my tail is. So you're just going to take this hair joint here. Uh, with all the other hair joints that you made for your tail. And you're going to click it and drag it up to where the hips are. Once the hips are highlighted, you'll place it there. And you can see the hair joint is now in hips. Um, now what we're going to do is we're going to go to our tools and bone weight transfer. Now you can see it's all in Japanese. Uh, however, I'm going to show you how to use it. So take that hair joint that you just moved in here and move it up to the top. We're going to find the head right here that it was connected to. Move it here. And now we're relocating it to the hips. So you'll move over here and move it to the hips. And then hit this button to transfer. Now another thing that we're going to do uh, is find the actual mesh for our tail as well. So like I said, um, you'll have the folder for hairs down here 
uh, under all the bones. And like I said with mine, the tail was the last hair that I made. So you can select that one and see what it's connected to. And that's my tail right there. Um, so what I'm going to do for that is the exact same thing. So we're going to go to our tools, bone weight transfer. We're going to take our hair mesh, put it up top. Um, we're going to take what it was connected to, which is the head, put that in the middle. And then finally, what we want it connect to now is the hips. We'll put that there. We'll click the button and you can see success down here at the bottom. Um, so now we're all done with that. Back out of the prefab now. And now if we hit our play button and go back to our scene and we grab the head. Of course, like I said, you got to do all the little drop downs, find the chest, your chest the neck and head. There it is. So now you grab a head, you see our tail doesn't move. Awesome. That's exactly what we wanted. Um, so now we're going to exit our play mode. Um, you don't have to hit the play mode or anything. Just follow the tutorial and that will get it done. So now we're going to save that and we're going to take this one out. All right, so if you don't have a tail and you've been following along, this is uh, the next step, whether you have a tail or not. We're going to select our prefab here. It got imported. We're going to go into our VRM and we're going to click duplicate and convert for VR chat. And once we do that, this box will come up here. We're going to go down and click duplicate and convert. And we're going to save the new prefab. You see it's the exact same thing, just with VR chat behind it. And click save. Now, after we got our model in here, this part uh, is optional. If you have a male character, you'll just click on the uh, model that you just imported. And where it says default animation set, you will change it to male if your character is a male. If it's female, you can keep it on female, or if you just want the female animations, uh, you can leave it there at female. All right, and the next step here uh, is the dynamic bones. So currently, uh, with our avatar, uh, the hair and the tail will not move on its own. So if we hit the play button here, and we go to our scene, and if we move it around, you see that it blinks and it will make facial expressions. However, when we move it, the hair doesn't move, neither does the tail. And we don't want that. Uh, your hair has motion and so do tail. Um, so what we're going to do to fix that is we need a, another asset called uh, Dynamic Bone. Uh, and this one is not free. Um, it uh, is on the Unity Asset Store. Uh, it's about $20 in US, so you'll just go to the Asset Store tab up here and you'll search Dynamic Bone. And there it is. You'll see it right here. Um, and uh, it's $20, and you'll just click on this one and um, download it and import it. Once you click on the downloader and the import, uh, it will bring you to this right here. And what you're going to do is just click import, just like we did with the last one. And now we have the dynamic bone scripts in here. And what we're going to do for that is you're just going to click on your avatar here. And to go to add component, dynamic bones. Now the dynamic bone script is in there. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to go down through here and find your hair bones. Uh, now if you have multiple layers of hair, uh, you might want to do them individually. I'm just going to show you a quick overview on how it works. 
Um, so what I'm going to do, if you have short hair like me, then you're in luck. You're just going to take the whole head here and you're going to drag it down here to the dynamic bone where it says root. Um, so mine is the head and you can see uh, this little collider thing here pop up. Now um, my gears are connected to my head but for me I don't want them to move because if you notice any type of animal ear, um, they don't really move. Now I know a lot of people like this and you can have it on here if you want, um, but uh, these are the two hair bones for my ears. Uh, I don't want them to move when I'm running. Uh, so what I'm going to do is click here, go down to my dynamic bones where it says exclusions. I'm gonna go down here and um, type the number of exclusions. So um, you're gonna want to put the eyes on there um, because they are connected to the head here. And I'm going to also put two hair joints uh, for my ears on there. So I have four. All right, and then once you type in four in the size, you'll get four little boxes here. And what you're gonna do is I have the left eye, I'm gonna drag that in here. The right eye, I'm gonna drag that in here. And my two ears, I'm gonna drag those in there as well. There, so now I only have the hair on my head selected. Uh, now for the next part, you might have to experiment a little bit um, as we have a few different options here. Um, so what you can do uh, is you can hit the play mode here and that will take you into play mode. Click over on your scene and now uh, if we move them, you see that uh, the hair has movement now. That's a little too much movement, so we're going to want to edit it. Uh, so my update rate I have at about 40. Uh, the dampening, I already have my options set up so I know how I like them. Um, so my dampening is at 0.86. Uh, the elasticity is, you know, how elastic your hair looks, uh, and you can play around with that. So if we move it up some, you can see the how less elastic it is. Um, and I have my elasticity set at 0.213. Uh, you can feel free to use these values if you want, if you have the same hair uh, as I do. Um, but uh, again, these are totally customizable. Um, the stiffness, uh, how stiff your hair is going to be. Um, you can play around with that and see what it looks like. I'm not going to explain every little detail, um, because I have mine set to how much I like them. You can play around with this in the play mode, um, to see what settings you would like. Um, until you get it just right uh, there and then move it forward and backwards to get it how you like it uh, and you see the hair is still clipping through the head a little bit uh, when we move it and we don't want it to do that so uh, I will show you that in a moment how you can fix the colliders on the hair um, but for now, we just uh, want to get it to how we want the hair to move. And that looks good for me. So those are my settings. Uh, I have the radius at 0 0.02. Uh, and that sets the radius uh, for your hair joints. Alright, so those are the options that I like. Now, since you are in play mode, uh, these will not save when you go uh, uncheck the play box right here. So what you're gonna wanna do is you're going to, um, not that, you're going to right click on dynamic bones and you're going to click copy component. And what that'll do 
is when we hit the play button, you see it all resets to normal. Uh, but that's okay because we copied the component. What we're going to do is right click on there and paste component values. And voila, as you can see, all of my values are here now. All right, and now we want to fix the clipping. So what we're going to do for that is we're going to scroll down here until we find our head. And what we want to put on here that we got with our dynamic bones is a dynamic bone collider. Um, so you're going to want to adjust your radius. Uh, and that's how big this circle is here. Uh, and for our radius, uh, we want something small like 0.1 um, that's just big enough for our head right here, as you can see. Um, so that's about the size of my head. Um, and we don't want it uh, to be exactly right there, so we're also going to set the height. And you can play around with the height depending on how big your head is. Um, but this is the setting that I have. So the gist of it is, um, when you set the height, it creates two circles. And what these two circles does is anything uh, uh, above this circle and below this circle is what's going to be the collider. So uh, the hair will collide with anything above and below these circles. Uh, so uh, it won't flip through. Uh, the other meshes here. And now that we have that set there, we're going to go back to our prefab model here. Uh, and under the dynamic bone script that you put in for the hair, you're going to go down to the collider option right here. Set it to one. If you have multiple colliders, like say for example, you have longer hair and you put colliders on your shoulders and the body as well, so your long hair wouldn't clip through. Um, you would put the number of colliders that you made. So anything your hair can clip through, you want to put colliders on them. Uh, but for me, I just have short hair, so I just have the one head collider. So we find the head that we put the collider on, and you're going to drag it over into the element slot here, and boom, we have the collider on there. And now, the collider will not allow your hair to clip while you're running in-game. So go ahead and save because I do save often in Unity in case it crashes. Now this next part is optional uh, if you have a tail. Um, so what we're going to do is if you have a tail like I do, um, we're going to want the tail to move as well. So we're going to add another dynamic bone script here. Uh, and this one is going to be for your tail. So you just drag your tail joint in right there. Uh, and I'm going to um, put in my values just to speed things up here. All right, and one thing that we do set for the tail is gravity. And my tail is really stiff there. Well, in game, it's gonna be stiff there as well. So we want to put a little bit of gravity, so point, negative point zero 0.01, so it tells it that it's pushing it down. And I have no exclusions on my tailbone because this tail is just all tail that we put on here. Um, and we do need to set up a collider. So the same thing, if there's anything that your tail can clip through, like for example, when I'm running, it will clip through my legs. So what we want to do is we want to go to tips here and add our component, our dynamic bone collider. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and set up the settings that I have on my collider. And there, our dynamic bone collider is set up. So now, Anything in between here, it will not clip through. Then, of course, just like we did before, we're going to go back to the dynamic bone script. Make sure it's the one for the tail. And our colliders will set to one. And we'll grab the uh, tips that we just set the collider on and place it here. Alright, now our dynamic bone setup. So in-game, 
our, uh, our tail has movement and all of our hair has movement. Um, and you can do the ears if you'd like. Me personally, I like mine a little more realistic, so I don't have the ears on mine, but you can do the same thing with yours as well. Just uh, select your uh, ear joints and make a dynamic bone script for each one of them and place each ear on there individually uh, and set that up however you like. All right, now that you have the dynamic bone set on the hair, what you're gonna want to do is set your view position. And if we come back to the um, primary file here, the Viraku VRChat avatar file or whatever your avatar is named, um, you're going to see the view position right here in VRC avatar descriptor. Uh, and what you're going to do there, that is basically where you're going to be doing your, uh, your view position in game. Um, so we're going to go ahead and set this until you see the little gray ball. Uh, so I'm going to start out with these settings. Um, and you'll have to play around with it, but the gist of it is you want to find this little gray ball. And what I do to normally find it, um, is put in, um, pieces of information that I got from a tutorial on how to do this and that is the view position is 0, 1.56 and is 0 0.07 and from there I'll adjust the height of it until it is right between my avatar's eyes. Um, so mine's a little on the shorter side so my y value will bring it down. In general, you want to slowly bring it down until it's right in front of your face. So 1.5, I didn't bring it down too much, so 1.4, one 1.1. Doing it this way will um, bring it down uh, slowly and you can see the ball start to drop. Uh, set it down to 1. All right, now it is inside our head right here. I'm gonna set this to 0.9. Gonna bring this out some more. So 0 0.1, 0 0.2, and right there, 0.2 is right in front of my face here. Uh, and if you keep your X at zero, it should be right between your eyes. Uh, I'm actually going to lower this a little more, so 0.8, that's a little too low, so we're going to do 0.85, and that looks about right, right between the eyes is where we want it. And like I said, this is going to be your view position in game. Uh, now that we have that set, we're going to go to save. And now the fun part, uploading it to VRChat. So now you're going to go up here and click VRChat SDK. Go control panel and here it's going to bring up VRChat SDK. You'll sign in with your VRChat account. Uh, so I'll have my username and password. And you'll click sign in. And once you do that you'll have all of these errors here but uh, that's okay. You can work on optimizing it later if you learn how to do that. So now you'll just click build and publish for windows. Um, we're going to go ahead and click that and what Unity is going to do is going to take a little bit but it's actually going to build and uh, get ready for upload into VRChat. Alright, now once that is finished, um, this box will pop up back here. Um, if it does not pop up for you, make sure that it is not paused right here, but it is in play mode, uh, and you're not on scene, you're on game. And here is where you will name your avatar. So I'll name this Karaku. You'll type in a description here. Um, so whatever, so uh, Karaku tutorial. Um, and then you'll click this box that says that yes, you are able to upload this model into VR chat and then you will click upload and that's going to take quite a bit, maybe um, two to five minutes depending on your internet speed. 
um, but once you do, it'll come up with a pop-up that says your your asset is ready to be viewed in VR chat. You'll just click OK, and uh, I'm not going to do that because um, I've already uploaded this avatar into VR chat. But let's go ahead and go into game and see how it looks. All right, another shameless self plug here. Uh, this is the Panda Den inside of VR chat. Uh, this is my own little custom world. Uh, it has many rooms and many floors. Uh, I'll take you guys on a tour of it later, um, but I just wanted to point that out. So you'll hit the V button and make sure that your avatar can talk and all of that's working properly. Uh, as you can see, the hair and the tail is moving properly. Um, and yeah. All of it's working, so there you have it. That is your VR chat tutorial and how to upload your avatar. If this video helped you in any way, go ahead and hit the like and subscribe button. And I will see you in future videos. Thanks for watching. Bye!